What's up? I'm B, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or you are listening to the podcast, I hope you're having an amazing day. Today, we are switching it up a little bit. The past few weeks have been pretty heavily centered around Brittany Dawn because she was doing that five-part series um, about speaking out and sharing her side of certain things. And to be honest, overall, there wasn't really much that came out that made me feel as if I had learned this this life-changing new information and I was like, oh my gosh, my opinion was completely wrong. Like, I, I didn't feel like there were any episodes that really made me change my mind. I know last week we listened to the episode about her testimony and I reacted to it and in that, there were a lot of things that I heard and I had internal questions about, but at the same time, I didn't necessarily want to raise them or be nitpicky or like really be overly critical, especially when somebody is sharing their own personal faith journey and how certain things impacted them in that way. And so I know that there wasn't a lot of things that I called her out for in the moment, um, but just know that like you had questions, I had questions, there were some things that didn't quite add up for me, but it didn't feel appropriate to call them out in that specific context. But anyway, today we are going to be reacting to a Paul and Morgan video, and I hope it's a little bit more lighthearted than what we've been going through the past few weeks. They went and saw the Barbie movie, and then they did a live stream titled Eye Opening Insights Christians React to Barbie Movie. And again, I do hope it is a little bit more lighthearted because I've got a white claw here. I'm not looking for anything too dense to like work through or talk through. I could be completely wrong about their approach to this, but we're keeping our fingers crossed here. And I do just want to point out, Paul and Morgan changed the banner on their YouTube channel. Like it's still the same pictures of each of them on either side. And I don't remember what was in between prior to this or prior to the change, but now it's a picture of each of them. And in the middle, there's text that says shiny, happy people. And I know that they had posted on Instagram a few days ago that they were just sharing their experience with shiny, happy people. And like we're in August now and they're still talking about it. So I might go back and do a reaction to them speaking about their experience. It, it's just one of those things where there's so much stuff I want to look into and so much content I want to make, but like working a full-time job and other things IRL getting in the way doesn't always allow me to make as much content as I want. So sometimes things just get put on the back burner. And um, if you're down for like a retro react to me reacting to them talking about their experience with shiny happy people, definitely let me know. Now with all of that out of the way, we are going to get into this reaction. But first, I want to hear your win for the week. And if you are newer around here, a win for the week is just something that happened to you within the past week that made you happy, gave you joy, made you grateful, whatever it may be, big or small, something that you would consider a win. My win is that last night I made French bread pizzas with barbecue chicken. I've never made them before, and so um, I saw this recipe pop up on Pinterest on the same day that I was making shredded barbecue chicken in the crock pot, and in the post, this lady was like, I usually make these pizzas when I have leftover chicken from making barbecue shredded chicken in the crock pot, and I was like, this is perfect. Let's do it. So I made those. They were delicious. If you follow me on Instagram, I did post a picture of them. And so you can see the comparison because I avoid dairy because of my endometriosis and my husband does not. And so he has his full on full dairy mozzarella French bread pizza. It's melty. It's creamy. It looks so good. And then you see mine with the dairy free cheese that like doesn't really melt. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is sad. It still tasted so good, but it was not pretty. It did not look very pretty. But anyway, eating those, they were delicious. I loved it. I love trying out new recipes. And so that is my win for the week. And I cannot wait to hear yours. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can leave it in the comment section down below. And if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify, you can leave it in the Q&A section for this specific episode. I cannot wait to hear your win and celebrate with you. Now, let's get to this reaction. 
Also, before we get into their reaction to the movie, I guess I should say that I have seen the Barbie movie. My husband and I went and we had a little nice little date day. I got a hot dog. I got a Diet Coke. He got some candy and popcorn. We had a great time. The movie was fine. I thought it was really fun in certain aspects, but I didn't expect it to be as serious as it was at certain points. And so um, going into it, I didn't really know what to expect. I was just like, I want to go see this movie. And so I put on a pink bodysuit and we went. I didn't see anything in it that was anti Christian or anti Jesus. And so with Paul and Morgan deciding to review it, I'm assuming they're going to um, have had a problem with it. I don't think that they would be reviewing it in a way where they're titling it like eye-opening Christians react if they loved it. If they were like, this is a great movie, everybody should go see it. I'm assuming they found something that was wrong with it. And so that's why they're discussing it on their channel. But who knows? Like I'm watching this for the first time with you. Let's get into it. What's up, you guys? <clears throat> I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. And the I'm The Barbie being movie is out. It's been out for a little over a week. Morgan and I went and saw it, and we have thoughts. We have thoughts. And Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it was just funny, because I got several messages from people on Instagram that were like, I want to hear your thoughts on it. What did you think? I went and saw it. I want to know what you think. Good. That's so, that is what good. we hope for. There has been a, honestly a ton of buzz around this movie. Perhaps the most buzz around any movie since you know, I mean for the last several years. For the last yeah. several years. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to give our honest thoughts and some of our thoughts may surprise you guys. Mm -hmm. Um I'm I'm very oh, excited okay. for this. Morgan, I say we dive right in oh. to you and I, we set out to go see this movie. Our theater experience was interesting in and of itself. <laughs> we didn't get to sit by each other. <laughs> oh no. The theaters are packed. We granted packed. we went for discount Tuesday at one of our local theaters, but man, like the, I'm glad we did. You know, let's You know what? I respect the money saving. I respect that frugalness. I will say that it's kind of annoying for, for our theater by our house um, that you have to pick your seat online before you go. Because I'm like, well, what if I change my mind once I get there? But in general, it is nice to be able to buy two tickets together so you know that you're not going to have that separation. But at the same time, I don't know the last time I went to a theater that was so packed like that. I don't know. I'm having a tough time remembering like recent movies that have really made people like pack into a theater and maybe it's because I'm not a movie person I've said this before multiple times I'm not a huge movie person I love tv shows but movies are just not always my thing so maybe it's just like that I'm not culturally aware of super popular movies but that's kind of a bummer that they did not get to sit together how sad that's so weird. I can't imagine being in the same theater, like going to a movie with somebody and then having different seats and watching the entire movie sitting there for like two hours because you're probably going to have your own reaction, but then you're going to be looking and like trying to see, are they laughing? Do they like it? Just say right out of the gate. Wait, you're glad we did what? That we went on discount Tuesday. Oh, definitely. Well, yes, yes. Um, I thought you were about to say you're glad. Also, back to the previous point, them going on Discount Tuesday could also be a reason that the theater was packed because things are very expensive right now. My goodness. And that we didn't sit next to each oh. other, which would have really hurt. That's <laughs> not what I was saying. <laughs> I feel like this is a very... Morgan, I wish it was what you were saying because he told you for the first time on camera that he had considered divorcing you in the past. So if you had said like, I loved sitting by myself in that theater, it was great, you would have been justified. And that's me being petty. That's me like putting myself into relationship problems that I have no, <laughs> I have no reason to be involved in. But him being like, oh, that would really hurt my feelings. It strikes me a little bit different because you very much hurt your wife's feelings on a previous video. And then you said that you could use it for clickbait. So, okay. All right. A kin shirt to wear. That's true. Honestly, it is. It's very much a kin shirt. 
And some of you You're might... You're kind of a kin well, in a way. Choose your words, my beautiful, loving wife. Choose your words. Barbie. Oh my God. Thank choose. you. That is my name, Barbie. Choose your words, my Barbie love of my life. Psych, I'm Teresa. <laughs> uh, Wait, was there a Teresa in the Barbie movie? <laughs> was there? Um, this is a very kin shirt. Those of you who are like, oh, Paul, that's such a kin move to roll up your sleeves that far. The fact is, I bought this shirt at Goodwill. The <laughs> it doesn't sleeve, have no sleeves. It ain't got no regular sleeves. It's got half sleeves. See, there is no roll, even though I do... Hey, hey, <laughs> even though I do roll up my sleeves sometimes. But we are on our way to see this movie, and I tell Morgan, you know, Morgan, this is this the first movie? It's interesting. Paul has always done things that I do not necessarily think align with the evangelical idea of traditional masculinity, right? You're following my my thought process there. There's this traditional evangelical perception of what men do and how they dress and what they look like and what actions they take and what kinds of jobs they have and all of this stuff. And I don't think that Paul always aligns with that. And this cap sleeve shirt does not necessarily align with what a lot of people in his community would consider to be traditional masculinity. And yet they still have so many opinions on gender roles and how women should behave and how men should behave. And um, they don't understand people being non-binary or using they, them or anything like that. Like they're so critical and judgmental of people who don't align with exactly what they believe and yet the community that they present themselves as belonging to kind of has different standards for masculinity than what Paul lives out. I hope that makes sense. That we've actually not sat next to each other because we bought <laughs> yeah. our tickets and we couldn't. Except for that one time when I went to the Avengers alone. Oh yeah? Yeah. But that was, we. I wasn't in the theater too. Right. So I say, <laughs> I say... I'm sorry, what was that about? Morgan went to the Avengers alone. Okay, no additional information provided. I, I hope that I'm not sitting next to these Barbie girls and you're sitting next to Ken's. Like, let's just hopefully that won't be the case. Guess what? It wasn't for me. It wasn't for you. <laughs> we walk into the theater and those of you who uh, let us know in the comments, have you seen Barbie? Me. Um. Yeah. But we walk in and we see a group of girls decked out in glam decked pink. Out. They're wearing the hot pink with the high heels. <laughs> and, of course, I, I scoff at them. Just kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I do, I giggle inside. I kin giggle. I give a kin giggle when I see them. And I'm like, wow. We, we go sit down to our seats. We see that. You're missing the entire point already. You're kin giggling, quote unquote, at a group of girls who come into the theater decked out and excited to see the Barbie movie. And you say, oh, I'm Ken giggling. A Ken would not do that. A Ken would not giggle at Barbies being Barbies and Barbies being fabulous. That's the whole point of the first half of the movie is that like Barbie's everything. He's just Ken. A Ken would love to see a Barbie decked out and excited and happy. Bro. Okay. Pack of girls come in and head right towards me. <laughs> yes, I was seated right next to the pack. Right next to him, but I was behind him watching. Yeah. My um, Teresa okay. eyes were all over them. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan, before we really just rip off the Band-Aid to uh -huh. this thing, uh -huh. before we just, just, just really dive into this movie, um, I do think we should give Ooh. a very brief, and, and I would be honored okay. if you would allow me. Oh no. I think we should do a very brief summary mm -hmm. of the film. Yeah, brief, you don't go together. <laughs> Anytime he's like, do you want me to give you a brief summary of the movie I watched last night? I'm like, sure. It's never brief. It goes on for like 30 something minutes. <laughs> I absolutely. Oh my gosh. Do y'all remember that video that I reacted to where it was Paul and his friend Michael and Paul kept getting on Michael and being like, we got to keep it brief. We got to keep it brief. We got to wrap this up. Like, don't go rambling. And he was on his butt about it the entire time. And now Morgan is out here hanging him to dry. She's all, he will say, do you want a brief explanation of something? And that is not brief. It lasts 30 minutes. This is fascinating. I, it's been a long time since I've done a reaction to Paul and Morgan together. And this dynamic is just very interesting to me. Also, another thing that just kind of like popped into my head and is still 
just sticking around a little bit is Morgan saying that when she saw the, the Barbie girls, the girls who were dressed up, decked out, super excited to be there, sitting by Paul, she had her eyes on them. That's not super indicative of a trusting relationship to me. To me, anyway, in my experience, in my opinion, I was trying to put myself in like that same situation if my husband and I had to sit in different seats in the theater and there were like girls who were who were all dressed up. They were decked out. They were excited to be at the Barbie movie and they were sitting next to him. My thought would not even be like, I got my eyes on this. I'm keeping an eye on the situation it, cause, because to me that that tells me that you don't really trust your husband. Like you're concerned, so you're keeping an eye because you don't know what he's going to do if any of those girls who are super excited to be there and fun and happy and having a good time try to interact with him. You don't know what he's going to do, and so you're keeping an eye on the situation. I might be keeping an eye on my spouse if we were not sitting next to each other in a theater to make sure that they were okay and like having a good time and like thinking, are they liking the movie? Are they not liking the movie? Are they laughing? What's going on? To be fair, my husband has a pretty uh, regular habit of falling asleep in movie theaters. So that would kind of be my main concern is like, is he awake still? Is he up? But like, I wouldn't be threatened by my spouse sitting next to pretty women. Absolutely, that is so not. Buckle up. No, that's not going to be the case today. I just want to give people an idea. I don't think we should. Oh, whatever. I'm just know, so you know, <laughs> if you're like planning on seeing the movie, there will probably be spoilers in this movie. Yeah. Video, so we're not yeah. going to go in. We're not going to go insane in detail and not spoilers. That like dead. <gasps> no, they said that. Now the movie's ruined. There's nothing like that. But yeah, so there may be some spoilers because we're about to rip off the bandaid, as I said. Um, but I think they need to plan these better. Like, why are they having this discussion now of whether or not they should give a synopsis or like a brief summary of the movie before they get started? And Morgan's just sitting there, she's all, whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh. But before I give the brief summary, so the director of this film, Greta Gerwig, she directed... Little Women. Little Women came out, what, around 2017 or something? No idea. But sure. I came off of the Little Women movie saying, I I like this director. I like Little Women. I gave eight, Little Women like an 8.5 out of 10, which is a nice score for me. Oh, and Lady Bird. She directed Lady Bird. You guys know I'm a movie critic. Eight, I just really yeah. like it. So Greta Gerwig, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, it's a movie about Barbie. Of course, that's right out of the gate, you're like, oh, that's going to be... You know, fl a fluff movie. But there's a very big difference between Little Women, which is based on a book and like trying to remain true to the storyline of the book while also having your own input and your own like creative aspects to it and creating an entire thing based on a doll, like creating an entire story and conflict and plot lines and progression, all of this based on a doll. And I'm thinking Greta Gerwig. I was excited. Yeah, well, I'm thinking to myself, Greta Gerwig's directing it. Okay, it's going to be a movie that has some adult mm -hmm. themes. It's going to have some layers. I'm excited about it as well. Mm -hmm. And then I started hearing, oh, this movie gets political. And so we ended up still being like, let's go see it. We, oh, I hear a little, a little baby up there. Um, all right, so we went in with, I feel like, realistic expectations. But I think we both said like, hey, let's just be real. Like, if we like this movie more than we think, let's share it. If not, then we'll share that. Summary of the movie. You got this Barbie living in the Barbie world. Everything is perfect and schlag. And then something starts to go a little bit awry with the main character. Isn't that from How I Met Your Mother? Oh, okay. So it's from The Office, which is a lot more tame than How I Met Your Mother. Because if it was in my head when I heard that, I was like, How I Met Your Mother. Why do they know that reference? Why have they watched that show? It, it is like basically everything they hate contained within nine seasons. So why would they be quoting it? But The Office, compared to that, relatively tame. Margot Robbie, where she starts experiencing not so perfect. Cellulite. Yeah, not so perfect <laughs> things. And it's like an alarming thing because the Barbie world, everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. yep. So she, um, and in the Barbie world, Ultimately, women completely rule the world. Yes. And so it's paradise. Yes. Because women rule. <laughs> yep. 
That's my life. <laughs> um, she goes on this adventure to make things right. It takes her into the real world of Los Angeles. Um, while she's there, she kind of discovers why things are uh, out of order and with, with her as Barbie, mm -hmm. why things are going awry. Um, she comes back to Barbie world. Oh, and by the way, Ken accompanies her to the real world. And while in the real world, Ken actually discovers that the, the patriarchy, that men rule the world, and therefore it's empowering to him. It's something he's never felt in the Barbie world. Mm -hmm. So he takes that back to the Barbie world and mm -hmm. without giving too much away. Yeah, takes over. <laughs> he, he, he takes over. And when Barbie returns to Barbie world, she realizes, oh, Ken has transformed this into this misogynistic men rule and even the other her other fellow feminist barbies have succumbed to man rule and they have taken on we're serving the men which mm -hmm. was a very interesting in its own right yes. and then barbie has to find a way to turn it back into feminist paradise is that fair amen how'd the i do end. how did i do I don't know. I zoned out. <laughs> that was the most oh brief summary I've God. ever given, and you still zone it out. It felt like it went on for a really long See, time. See, this is Am what I, I wrong? <laughs> this is what I'm working with. I just give the briefest summary I've ever given, and she still zones out. Give me a little credit, people. So, all right, let's oh, talk Morgan. about the issues here, people. Can, Rating. Okay, do you want to rate it right now? Yeah. I was gonna save that for the end, but we can go ahead right now. I don't know. Whatever. What do you get? What do you want to do? I don't care. We need because we need to give our official one out of ten rating. I submit to my patriarchy husband. So. All right. Let's make him wait till the end. <laughs> let's give Morgan our positives of the film before we. Wow. Wow. Okay. I know in the past there's been a lot of conversation about how Morgan behaves in these videos and her seemingly not really wanting to do YouTube and how she lost her spark over the past few years ever since she's been married to Paul because here's what she did before and here's kind of what she's doing now and compared to her having a record label and doing music videos and covering secular songs to focusing 100% on being Christian and a, a godly wife and a spiritual wife and here's kind of how her demeanor's changed. Like there have been so many different conversations about that and my perspective has always kind of been that like, yeah, I have a little bit of a soft spot for Morgan. I think the kind of environment that she was raised in kind of left her vulnerable to maybe accepting unhappiness on a certain level. And I think that that can be a, a, a very deep topic with a lot of layers. And especially when you're talking about a marriage, like not every day is going to be sunshine and happiness. And I love this. Everybody has their own flaws. Everyone has their own thing that they are dealing with. And so you're not going to be happy 100% of the time. However, I have seen that some of Morgan's siblings appear to have stepped away from some of those more traditional evangelical beliefs. And so again, like, I don't know what her what her upbringing looked like, how heavy the influence of traditional evangelical Christianity was on it or anything like that. But I was like, look, I do feel bad that she seems to be upset. But at the same time, she's an adult. She's made her own choices. And Morgan has BPD. Morgan was diagnosed with that. She talked about it in a YouTube video. We've talked about this before. And so whenever Morgan has kind of like an off day on the channel or she appears to be tired or bored or upset or whatever it is, I've always tried to be very careful of I'm not speaking into what their marriage looks like. I'm not saying that she's acting like this because she's unhappy in her marriage. Because to me, a marriage is a sacred thing. And so even though I might have my opinion on certain things, I fully understand that I don't know what a marriage looks like day to day between other people, right? So like I try to be very aware of that. However, that last minute of footage made me so uncomfortable and the fact that the, it, it was on a live stream. And so this is how she's acting, knowing that people are watching her. She yawned, which sometimes you yawn, you can't help it. But like, 
she's yawning. She's telling Paul that he doesn't know how to keep things brief. She's saying, I don't care. Like, I, well, I thought we would tell him, but I guess I don't care. Whatever. I'll defer to my patriarchy husband. But saying it as like a joke, I feel very uncomfortable with this. I can't pinpoint why. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure of the words to use to describe my discomfort, whether it is about her actions and her choices or whether it's more so related to Paul being her husband and, and maybe being able to tell if she's in a bad mood and and deciding like we don't have to do this right now. I, I don't know. I think it's tough when you tie your income and your money and your marriage and your personality all together. Like this is this is their job. This is how they make money. The Paul and Morgan show. Like the Paul and Morgan, the Paul and Morgan show. It's them. It's the two of them on YouTube together as a Christian influencer couple. And so you you do have the choice to say like Morgan's in a bad mood right now. We don't have to do this live stream. Or like Morgan doesn't like doing these videos. She doesn't have to be in them because the last two pre-recorded videos they put out were just Paul. But at the same time, if this is what you've built your channel on and this is what you rely on for your income, it's a tough spot to be in. This is why I have such an issue with channels run by couples because not only are you engaging in a business partnership, but then you're bringing your marriage into it and things can get very messy and it's not just a matter of like, here's what's best for business. So if somebody is no longer meeting the needs of the business, then we have to evaluate what to do about it. Maybe they get replaced, whatever it is. Like you're bringing your marriage into it, your spouse into it. This is your everyday life that is being impacted by this business decision. And so maybe I'm reading too deeply into her being like, I don't care. I'll defer to you. But it just kind of like brought something up in me that I did not like seeing really rip into this thing what are our our positives of the barbie movie uh, no. i want to hear one positive out of you if you can't give one positive then it comes across uh, like you zero? no <laughs> just kidding i think ryan gosling was hilarious i've only ever really seen him in like pretty serious movies so okay. i thought it was very fun to see his comical side come out um, Margot Robbie is literally insanely beautiful, so I enjoy just seeing her be beautiful. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> She's just so such a beautiful woman, and like I like her acting a lot. This was my least fav favorite movie of hers. So I'm guessing that I've ever seen her in. I'm guessing you liked the uh, line when the narrator's voice come out. Yes, because like, at one point Margot is note to filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, Barbie is crying, and she's supposed to look like. Wow, this is just a real person crying, not as attractive. Yeah, and she was like, note to filmmaker, don't hire Margot Robbie if you're trying to get this point across. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so you like that part. Yes. Anything um, else? Um, I, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> Let's be so real here. How are you going to talk about the positives of the Barbie movie and not mention Alan? You're going to sleep on Alan? It's a shame. <laughs> That's about all I got. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I will say a couple <sighs> positives. I thought I agree with you. Ken, particularly bad Ken, if you will, because for the first half of the movie, he's just <clears throat> annoying, cliche, shallow Ken. And then he turns into, I, this is kind of spoilers, if you will, but you get the picture. He turns into this you know he's uh, finally being seen for the first time yes he's being seen he's macho man because barbie does not love ken in this movie just fy he turns into dumb frat boy self-important ken that's the ken that you like the, my mojo dojo casa house what are you talking about paul this should not make me as frustrated as it does the, like their views on the barbie movie should probably not get me this frustrated. But that's your positive? Like, let's be real here. That's your positive. Is Ken turning... Dumb, dumb Ken. <laughs> Again, it's a fictional character. 
turning into frat boy pro patriarchy Ken. The same Ken who says like, once I realized the patriarchy wasn't about horses, I wasn't super interested in it. Like that's part of the joke. And at the end of the movie, the Barbies and the Kens realize that one gender should not be over the other. And hey, like, you know, we're not going to hit equality straight away, but we can start making progress. That's how I took it. That was my perspective. Um, It's just kind of like a gender swapped sort of thing where if you live in America, women, um, you know, we have rights, we can vote, we can own property, we can open our own bank accounts. And that's great. But we're not exactly on equal footing. And so we can keep working to try and make that a reality. And then in Barbie land, it's it's the Barbies that are in that swap position. And that's why Margot or Barbie's character, Margot's character Barbie, because there's a bunch of different Barbies, but Margot as Barbie realizes that she took Ken for granted and she could treat him a little bit better. So it's a little bit uh, interesting that Paul is leading this conversation saying that Ken, once he turned into a jerk, is that was the high point for him. I would beat the W in the Barbie movies. Barbie loved Ken, okay? Wait, really? Yes. And Ken was like Prince Charming, you know, like Barbie and the Nutcracker, like. Well, maybe if Ken was Prince Charming in this movie, Barbie would have loved him. But in this movie, he was just Ken. He's just Ken. And just by virtue of him being Ken doesn't mean that Barbie has to love him. This is all fictional. And Morgan comparing it to like the cartoon Barbie movie is, well, yeah, they're for kids. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different than a movie made for adults. Like all these movies, the wait is that a real movie? The prim- Princess and the N- Nutcracker. <laughs> so Princess and the Nutcracker. Now that sounds like wait, a po- Princess and the Frog p- Poppernickel. <laughs> princess and the Poppernickel, Princess and the Nutcracker. You know, one of y'all out there knows what I'm talking about that movie. It's like the Princess but, like, and Ken the Popper, right? But like Ken is in there being another character, but he's like Prince Charming. He comes and saves the day. He is his- so like yeah, I just. Yeah, he could come and save the day, but he did not do that in this movie. Really <laughs> made it where she hates him. She she doesn't hate him. <laughs> and wants but nothing to do with him. She's just it's not just interested. Like... She's just not interested in him. Yeah. And so <laughs> uh, I thought that, again, going to the positive elements of the film, when we are introduced to patriarchy, bad kin, it actually... Princess act- and the Popper. Princess and the Popper. It actually <laughs> breathed a lot of almost... And again, he was over the top patriarchy. He was over the top misogynist, if you will, mm-hmm. but it brought a breath of like, oh, I, I literally, you guys, the redditors are gonna be all over for me, th- mm-hmm. all over me for this, but <laughs> you almost because it's so, women, uh, men are the problem, men are bad, women need to be in positions of, of lead, like women literally need to rule the world. That's the best way. It was so pushed th- like that that when Ken suddenly got his shot and kind of took over. I was rooting for him. Yeah. What? Same. And, he, and it was just... I'm not a movie critic. Again, I don't watch a lot of movies. And so maybe I am seeing this completely differently. Feel free to like roast me in the comments if I'm just missing the point of this movie. But like I was talking about a few minutes ago, the movie was not saying that if women were in charge of absolutely everything it would all be great and everything would be perfect because that's how it was in the beginning. And then by the end, they're talking about like, hey, maybe we should include Ken's in these things. Maybe we shouldn't take them for granted and we should let them make decisions. And, you know, they kind of make the joke of like, well, Ken's got to start somewhere. And so it's a little bit lighthearted in that way, but it's not saying to me the way that I perceived it that women should be absolutely in charge of everything. We should rule over everything in the world and make all the decisions and men are worthless and useless and we don't need them. That's not how I took it. And I think if you're an insecure man, maybe you're more likely to take it that way. I'm not saying that Paul's Paul's insecure, but again, I went and I saw the movie with my husband and we did not have any conversation about like, Oh, it it was a man-hating movie. I liked Ken when he became a college frat boy D-bag. It was like, oh, that was a fun movie. I liked seeing that. It's because he was funny. Like, he actually brought humor, much-needed humor that the film lacked. Like, the film, 
Well, we're about to get into the negatives. Um, also, uh, the song "I'm Just Kin," which kind of bled into that fight scene. I'm just kin. Anywhere else, I'd be a tin. Um, I thought the fight scene actually was <laughs> okay. refreshingly fun because mm -hmm. you're so used to seeing fight scenes in movies where <laughs> they're so like bloody and gory. Yeah, people die, and it's, but then suddenly you have this fight scene where it's almost like a pillow fight in a way. Yeah, and it was yeah. refreshing and fun. Yeah, I thought the fight scene was good. I thought that. Uh, let's see i thought the beach scene where the women like form their plot and so they're just kind of like oh uh, yeah leading the men on and so they're like <laughs> hey you know okay yeah you can play your guitars and sing for us and it was like kind of that joke that men want to grab the guitar and think that they're well like, i liked ryan's line he said can i grab my guitar and sing at you for four hours sing at you <laughs> and which is kind of funny because in all reality, the person that brings the guitar to the party <laughs> just, wants, just wants to play at you. Doesn't really want anyone else to join in. <laughs> like. not yeah, that's the joke. That's why it's funny. That that's why they put it in the movie because that's the joke. Girls maybe don't love that as much as guys <laughs> think. Comment in the comment section, ladies. Do you love when a guy brings his guitar and sings? for you slash at you, but where they're all on the beach and all of the kins are singing the exact same song to all the Barbies. I thought that was very funny. Um, the visuals, people were, were, you know, the people that love this film were raving about the visuals. Oh my goodness, the scenery, the costume, hilarious. the design. It's very hilarious to me because the whole set was plastic. <laughs> like, no, don't get me okay, wrong. So I Oh, it's hilarious. The whole set was plastic. But I was talking to my brother-in-law about this, and he said that he was reading some article or something where they had talked about how um, if you get like an actual Barbie doll and then you get the accessories, the Barbies are always just a little bit too big for the accessory, for the bed, for the car, whatever. You know, when you see Barbie in the movie, especially in the car, the car isn't to scale of a human body. And that's not how a human person would look in a car. She's a little bit bigger for it. She's a little bit too big for it. And so he had said that they did the calculations of the ratio that physical objects within Barbie toys are a little bit smaller. Like they figured out that percentage compared to the size of Barbies and then they made everything in the movie to scale. And so that's impressive and building stuff like that and doing things without the CGI and, and, and putting that work and that effort into it. I'm not saying that CGI doesn't take work and effort, but to manually do all of these things, it was intentional and it was purposeful. And so that is pretty cool. Also, the wardrobe all throughout was amazing. I loved every outfit. I loved everything about it. Like outfit wise, set wise, I thought it was really cool. Enjoyed it to a point but like let's be real the whole set was plastic it probably costs like a million dollars and then that's why their marketing campaign could be a hundred million <laughs> i heard that it cost uh, that they used so much pink paint that it caused a pink paint shortage <laughs> but no i mean that was kind of cool but i'm thinking to myself this is what i would expect like they better do a good job yeah with the costume and set, and set design and stuff and then um i also said yeah, you expect it, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to happen. And so you can have high expectations for something and it can suck. It, like, so you're just going to be like, well, I would expect it to be good. So I'm not going to say it's a positive that it was good. All right. The last thing that the last positive I had was the hype around the movie, largely due to the marketing. The marketing team, I think, had a Insane. They went insane. I mean, you guys saw this advertisement yeah. for this movie everywhere. And insane. if you can come up with the amount of money to advertise the crud out of a film and create hype, it really turned this film into a like a cultural icon, an iconic moment in cinema and culture history that made me want to go see it because it's so hyped up. And I'm going to go see it and I'm finally going to have a full theater again. That's fun. Mm -hmm. So I appreciated that about this film, now the negatives. Let's go, Morgan, I'll let you rip off the Band-Aid. Because oh, there were there were plenty of negatives. Plenty. Uh, all right. <clears throat> well, just correlating to that marketing, the opposite side of it is like, this movie is not good enough that like, if they didn't have a great marketing team, like 
people would not have gone to see this movie. Like, it wouldn't have the hype that it has because it's not that great of a movie. Like, it's not a five-star or whatever, ten-star movie. Like, At the end of the day, objectively, even if you pull the intense, woke, feminist, political stuff out of it, it's just not that great a movie. Well, if you pull that all out, there... It's not an intense, woke, feminist movie. But I will say that if their marketing team did not do as good of a job as they did marketing, I don't know that it would have gotten this amount of attention. But it's not necessarily anything to do with the movie. I don't know if we're necessarily at a time in pop culture where movies are being pushed like that. I think pretty frequently we see trailers come out. And then like maybe one or two interviews or appearances on a late night talk show and then the movie comes out and that's kind of it. And then like three weeks later, it's on a streaming platform. I don't think people are promoting movies like this anymore. And so that's why it got a lot of attention. Like this is a unique thing that people are doing. And not that it's never been done before, but that it's not the norm now and so i think it did generate a lot of interest and rightfully so because it was fun to see people promoting it it was so cool to see margot robbie's outfits like it was a fun thing to wait with everybody and experience the lead up to this movie coming out and then the movie came out and it's good it's not my favorite movie i wouldn't be like oh my god i would die for the barbie movie but but like i enjoyed it i thought it was fun i laughed a few times and it had a good message at the end in my opinion and so yeah maybe it wouldn't have been this smashing spectacular theatrical success without the marketing but not a lot of other movies are doing marketing like this like the way that the barbie movie did it and they did a good job they did a great job at what they were tasked with doing in promoting the movie wouldn't be a storyline anymore because that was the whole story so let us begin guys so here's the thing i get that wait can we say you're allowed to disagree with us i know there are plenty of especially women that are Uh, like best friend over here carl that came across very sarcastic and i think a lot of what i've said throughout this is sarcastic it's not in mean spirit like it's really not I just feel like I have to put that out there because I don't generally include a ton of sarcasm. It's like one or two comments here and there. And this one I feel is pretty heavy on uh, the sarcasm. And so I just need to put the disclaimer out. I'm not like upset or angry or being malicious or anything. It's just like y'all are upset about the Barbie movie. You're rooting for Ken in his Mojo Dojo Casa house. Like, the, the point of that Ken is that he's being ridiculous. But that's that's the part that Paul liked, okay? You do you, you know? Gave it a 10 out of 10. Hopefully she's... she's. Granted, we've talked since then, and she was like, okay, see what you're saying. And but, but she if, still wouldn't lower her score. If you want, <laughs> if you're just like, oh, I love the movie, and... Yeah, that's fair. You're allowed to have that, but you're wrong. <laughs> it, it just wasn't that great of a movie. Ah! It just wasn't that great of a movie. Right, 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 right. Okay, so here's the thing. I grew up playing with Barbies, with Polly Pockets, even brat stalls, until my mom realized that they were way too sexualized. You played like, with no. brat stalls? <laughs> oh my god! So Barbie, and I grew up watching all of the Barbie movies. That was my life. I love Barbie movies. Um, even though I couldn't remember that that name, Princess and the Popper Pickle. <laughs> I didn't. Re- so you really like the Barbie movies? Yes. So mm. when I heard like two years ago, whenever it was. That's so interesting because Morgan and I are basically the same age. Like we're a few months apart. And I don't ever remember watching Barbie movies as a kid. Like I really, I liked Barbies and I liked playing with them, but I don't ever remember watching them. I'm trying to think like, did they not come out when I was at an age where I would have been interested in them or... Were, did they exist and I was just too preoccupied with like Star Wars and Rugrats that I didn't watch those movies? I don't know. I In my head, the Barbie animated movies didn't come out until I was at an age where I'd kind of outgrown that interest. So I don't know. Is that They were making a Barbie movie. Like I was like, oh, a real life Barbie movie. 
like it's gonna be better than Life Size with Tyra Banks in it off of Disney Channel. That was actually really good. That was a great one. Go back to watching that one. I will. (laughs) Um, So I was just pumped. Barbie is supposed to be like fun, lighthearted. The movie is supposed to be fun, lighthearted, pink, colorful, vibrant, life giving, and like fun costumes, cool makeup, great set design, and. It had those things in this movie, but it was so political, you guys. So political that that overshadowed everything else, in my personal opinion. It was shockingly political. Like, shockingly. I don't think it was political. I think Paul and Morgan are just upset that there is a veiled criticism of the patriarchy. And honestly, I don't even know if that's how they perceived it now that I'm saying it out loud. I think it's just that they saw a fictional world where women ruled everything and men were in charge of all the things that they wanted to be in charge of. And they were kind of seen as like an afterthought of, oh, it's girls night. Every night's girls night. You don't need to spend the night, Ken. It's girls night tonight. What are we going to do if you stay here? Goodbye. And it was like, this is political. They want women to rule everything. They want to suppress men. We're the most targeted group in the entire world. Like that might be more accurate to how they are perceiving the messaging of this film. But again, I don't think this film was like heavily political. I think it's realistic to acknowledge patriarchy and I thought it was cool again I did not know what to expect in going to see this movie um so I didn't know how serious it was going to be if it was fun if it was going to be silly and I think they did a good job balancing out the silly parts with the more serious parts. I think they probably saw the first 30 minutes of the movie and they took it from that to this is an attack on traditional homes this is an attack on traditional Christianity because we believe that men are in charge and men make the choices and any woman in a pastoral position or a bible group leadership position is of the devil it's not biblical xyz like they 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 took it over to an extreme, extreme place. That's how I'm hearing it. Yeah, it was so hard to, you know, enjoy or appreciate the costumes, enjoy or appreciate the setting, the the cast that was there. Like, you really couldn't. Here's a theory that I just that have kind of is, has been formulating. Could it be so in your face political that it was almost intended to be like a satire film? Like she was thinking to herself, we're just going to, we're not just out to have an agenda that women rule the world and that men are, you know, the problems, all the problems in the world, but we're actually going to make a satire film, like an SNL skit. I don't know. I mean, it was just so (laughs) insane. No, because they were being very serious about their stuff that they were bringing up. So that's my first thing is it's just way too political. I'm fine if you want to bring politics into movies. I'm fine if you want to try to get your agenda across in a movie. But there's a line that you cross to where it's like nothing is fun about this movie anymore because you have gone way too over the top. Every other line is men are trash, women rule, the world must be run by women, men are just crap, blah, Mark, blah, blah. Can I, can I ask you this, more? I completely disagree with her take on the movie. And if that's how she perceived the movie, I I don't even know what to say about that. Like, I don't even know what kind of clarifying questions to ask her. And I'm sure if I thought about it hard enough, I could. But hearing that just initially, my initial response is like, why is that what you thought the movie was about? I did not at any point within the movie hear the messaging that men are trash. I never once thought I heard that messaging, explicitly heard that messaging. Nothing, nothing in that movie said to me that we are telling you men are trash. And so I think I've made it pretty evident that I don't agree with their perspective on the politicalness of this movie or like they think it's it's giving one message, I think it's a different message, and so I don't want to be too repetitive. But to like you can say like I don't like this movie, but her getting on here and being like you can have a political message and it can be different than what I believe, and that's okay. But this entire movie was talking about how men are trash. 
I mean, my gut reaction is like, how is that even your opinion? How could you think that? Like, we watched the same movie, right? Why is that what you're thinking? But at the same time, I have to be considerate of the fact that they are, again, aligning with traditional evangelical Christian values. And so if you question a man's right to lead and be above women in certain aspects, like when you see that in a movie, it's going to feel threatening to you. And honestly, that's really sad. Like, it's really sad that you see people just pointing out like, hey, this is kind of like a satire on how the real world is, but it's gender swapped and it's not fun. It's not super fun to be on the other end of that. On the end, when when you're in charge and you're high and mighty and you're getting to do whatever you want to do, it's super fun. But then you put on the other shoe and you're like, oh, this doesn't feel good. We should maybe not have a system like this. To see something like that and be like, that's an attack on men. Ooh, that makes me really sad that that's your perspective. We're about to get real. Yes. You, and I didn't even mention that I was going to bring this up. You've had a hard week when it comes to men. Actually, I feel like <laughs> since we've been married, this has perhaps been the hardest week. There's been three times this week where Morgan has come home from being out and about and had not a good story of, of where just men, literally uh, a man apparently stalking her in Walmart. My favorite place. How, Walmart, come on, get, get it together, Walmart. You guys are better than this. Oh uh, a man making weird remarks at a Jimmy John's drive through Not weird, sexual harassment. And then another, something else. Yeah. So I feel like this week, and then on the tail end of all this happening, in a week span, you go see the Barbie movie. So my question to you is, okay. do men, I think, I, let me see how I wrote it down. The question is, um, <laughs> do men deserve the way they were depicted in this film? <laughs> well, I said something when we got out of the movies. America Ferrara, Ferrara, whatever her name is. America Ferrara like put some respect on it. Where she went off about like how hard it is to be a woman and be skinny, but not too skinny. Smile to man, but don't smile too much. Do this, do that, blah, blah, And I said something about how, like, I mean, everything she said was basically true. Okay. <laughs> like, but does that mean that that means women should just totally rule the world? Does that mean that men have it way better than us? No. And again, that's not what the movie was saying. Then women do, like... No, not necessarily. Um, no, I don't think that men should be should have been portrayed that way, the way that they were in the movies, um, because there are a ton of very good men in this world, and I am tired of it being made out to be like the majority of men are just total trash. Leaving leaving this film as a man. You're, you're almost like, okay, I, there, you're, there were a few options for you. A man that had just watched this film should feel, one, guilty for being a man. Two, okay, being a man is so bad that I'm going to become trans. And now, now I'm fixed because what? now I'm a, a woman. What? Or um, kind of like I'm going to be the, a, most quiet. The, the, the most meek, submissive, soft man now. <laughs> I'm going to... Take what Paul says and be meek and mild, but he meant that for the women. <laughs> uh, um. I, I, I can't even compute clearly to address that. No, like you're, you're, you're wrong. You're, you're freaking wrong. This, this movie was not to make men feel bad about being men. It was not pushing an agenda that was going to convince people who weren't trans to become trans. Like, Oh, nope. Mm -mm. Nope. That's the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. What kind of agenda are you pushing, Paul and Morgan, that you're saying the Barbie movie is meant to make men feel bad about being born as male and identifying with that? Or it's to push the trans agenda? Like, cause, quote unquote. Okay, again. If you watch me for a long time, I hope you know that when I say trans agenda, it's in a completely facetious mocking way because I don't think that's what's happening. But oh my God, I did not think that's where they were going to go with, with this video, with this review. Dude. 
before I said I didn't want to say that Paul was insecure based on his reaction to this movie, but the more I hear them talk about it, the more that's the vibe I'm getting. It's like you you feel like this movie is threatening to your identity. And so that's why you're having a negative reaction to it. Because the thought of men being questioned at the at the, the slightest implication of them being questioned is like <gasps> it's a full blown attack. <sighs> I mean that to, the Bible, to me the largely Bible. those were kind of the three reactions. Yeah. There was a little redemptive monologue between Ken and Barbie. Well, by definition, that's not a monologue then, is it? Uh, a little, you know what I mean? Where it was like, okay, he's Barry. able to kind of yeah. also find his independence uh -huh. apart from Barbie. But, uh, but largely, any man that goes to this film is going to feel guilty walking out. Mm -hmm. And it's just very sad to think I had these, you know, 17-year-old. That's just a wild take teeny bopper girls in their pink dresses and high heels sitting next to me, you got these these young ladies that are just ingesting this film. That's what one thing that I wrote down. It very, it's very sad and sobering. Yeah, I was looking around at the end of the movie of just like all the people leaving and as we were walking out, just young girls like there were some as young as probably five or six in there which Wait, for is real? weird yeah because there was some sexual in your window yeah, some definitely. some sexual in your window yeah, in this, this movie is not meant for kids which is also sad because it's barbie um but i uh, was just thinking like you know i didn't i don't think there was anything in there that was super inappropriate for kids that young but i don't necessarily know if a kid who was, you know, four or five would find it super entertaining. I guess it would probably depend on your kid's own personality. But a lot of the five-year-olds that I know, which is not a lot, it's like my nieces and nephews, um, I don't necessarily know that they would have sat through that movie and found it enjoyable. I wouldn't be concerned about taking them to see it because of the sexual innuendos. There was maybe two that I can think of, maybe three. My concern wouldn't be that they were going to be exposed to something inappropriate by coming to see this movie. It would just be that they would get bored because it's not an animated film or the Netflix show Is It Cake. They would probably get bored because it wasn't one of those two things and that would be a problem. Not that the content of the movie was inappropriate have this type of propaganda being shoved down my throat when I was younger growing up like I didn't have that and whether that was because like my parents protected me from watching propaganda like that or what you had evangelical propaganda like <laughs> once again I don't think that this film was propaganda I don't think something posing a challenge to generally held beliefs is propaganda. I don't think that it's a threatening thing. I don't think it's a negative thing. I think we should all always be questioning the status quo and the norm and evaluating whether or not that's a healthy thing. And for them to be threatened by that is very telling. I hope they did. Yeah. Or it just wasn't being like hardcore created. I don't know. Um, but like the fact that 10 year olds are watching this and whether it's subconscious or conscious, these thoughts of men are trash, women should be ruling the world. If we live in a terrible world because men are in power and women are not, which is not even true now, guys, well, like, they, they there kept, are a crap ton of women in power. They these kept, days. they kept referring to the Supreme court and yeah. ultimately saying that the Supreme court in Barbie world needs to be all, it's all women. Yeah. And, but it's like. I mean, there's there's several women on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff but they that's were. That's not good enough. They her. kept alluding to oh the the Mattel who created Barbie. I know somebody who has a boss that's a woman, which means there can be no gender discrimination in this world. That's such a simplistic way to view things. It's like well, there are women on the Supreme Court, so there can be no gender discrimination or discrepancies in the way that people are treated there can be no sort of stigma against certain people or anything like that because there are women on the supreme court be all of the main people within the brand are men and it's like well actually if you look into it like there's quite a few it's almost even mm -hmm. to my knowledge i was listening to a ben shapiro thing where he said it's like 
Well, you know, sixty forty, like forty percent are women that are on the board. Mm -hmm. um, but they're well. That's the joke. Like that's that's the comic part. It might not necessarily depict reality exactly, but it's funny to see a boardroom full of men being like, "We're talking about women and women empowerment and girlhood," because that happens a lot in real life. It's like this is how it should be as a woman, or we're going to create this thing for women, but we're not gonna like include any women on the decision making of this thing. If you're anyone who identifies as female or maybe you are autistic, maybe you're trans, maybe you're gay, whatever it might be, you experience a group of people who are very enthusiastic making a decision that affects you and thinking like they're thinking this is amazing this is the best choice ever they're gonna be so happy about this but in reality you're like you didn't consult with anyone in this circle and here's these five massive things that you are missing and i certainly don't want to sit here and make it seem like i am saying that women are the most marginalized group in society and especially in talking about this coming from a white woman like i don't want that to be the perception but in comparison to the movie that's that's what's going on it's a group full of men talking about how women and little girls are going to be so excited and barbie is so amazing and so that's where that comparison comes in i need to make it fully known that I am 100% aware that in terms of having the odds stacked against you, white women are given a lot of privileges and exceptions that other marginalized groups do not have the privilege of experiencing. Or creating it like it's but just that's insane. Not good enough. <laughs> and then there's literally at the end of the movie, it's like, okay, we've just, you know, ana anatomy, an autonomy, autonomy. Mm -hmm. The autonomy is back. It's ours again. We have all women on, on the Supreme Court. And then one of the kins is like, can we just have one single man on the Supreme Court? And she says, nope, but you can have a lower place. And he's like, that'll work. Can I wear a robe? <laughs> it's, it, <laughs> it like giggles off screen. <laughs> again, it, it was so... It's so degrading Absurdly <laughs> degrading and political. I've talked about this multiple times throughout the video, so I'm not going to continue to repeat myself. But it's like... You're missing the point. You are so distracted by being offended that there is any sort of criticism to what you believe is the right way that things should be run that you're not even considering the point of this. You're, you're missing the mark here. Political. Yeah, so that was frustrating. It almost feels like she's like Greta Gerwig dug her own grave. And granted, like it's crushing it in the box office, Will it have a major sharp but decline? I think that's because a lot of people going probably don't have any idea that it's this like woke and political. I actually, there were two girls walking out and I heard them talking and one of the girls was like, did you know it was going to be like that? And one, the other girl was like, what, like what? And she was like, so like down on men. And the girl was like, no, I had no idea. Yeah, I feel like it, it, <laughs> it could have been so much of a, just like um, literally... I'm kind of thinking it's going to drop off because it, it was so political. Like, it's not a fun movie for men. No, or women, in my personal opinion. It wasn't fun so for I, me to watch. I don't think watch. it's going to make, it, in the long run, the longevity, the bringing in the money. I don't find movies, as a woman, as a confident woman, I don't find movies bashing men funny. Like... That's not funny to me. That's not going to solve our problems in the world is to like cut men out completely in the universe is to our future is female. Like that's not fun or funny to me or entertaining. Like it's annoying and dumb. And it's like this isn't beneficial to anyone, Greta Gerwig. <sighs> um. Again, I don't think that the point of the movie was to bash men. There was, you know, the classic... Uh, oh, little man is awake. There was the classic trans Barbie that, uh, you know, it, it felt like I was watching, uh, what's, uh, Dylan, Dylan Mulvaney, Dylan Mulvaney up there Yes, uh, as a Barbie. Yes. That, that, that could have been even more explicit. Like there could have been just a ton of that. Like you're watching that. 
What are you talking about the classic trans Barbie? I know one of the actresses who was playing a Barbie as a transgender woman, but I only knew that because I saw somebody posting a hateful tweet about it. I'd never seen that actress before. I had no idea who she was. I thought she was very funny in the movie. If, if this is what they're talking about, where she's like, and what a good job you do at Beach. Like, I thought that that scene was funny. I had no thought in my head about, like, a, a, about some sort of agenda being pushed in my face because I didn't even know that that actress was trans. So what are you talking about? Taylor Swift music video, mm -hmm. a, a modern day Taylor Swift <laughs> yeah. music video, but yeah. but there was uh, just, just FYI, um, I got that really the first probably thirty to forty five minutes of the film, and again I'm, I'm going in still like hopeful you know, but it was no, just a bleh. It was like I I almost closed my eyes, and then personally I felt like the movie yeah, actually it was really slow. yeah I felt like it actually picked up. And had a pretty decent second half or, you know, yeah, the second half of the movie was decent-ish. Should we, should we give our, still annoying. should we give our official scores now? Well, let me just say one more thing. And this is something that I mentioned to my friend Carl and she was kind of like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> or just like, was like, oh, I didn't really think about that. Or I think this was one of them. But I just really thought that the fact that one of the main characters in the real world is a middle school girl middle school aged girl who barbie thought was the girl who was like playing with her in the real world which was like causing barbie to have issues in barbie world whatever um and so she went to find her and like make her happy again and this middle school girl was probably like 12 years old and she was so rude so mean so oh, bitter so sad barbie came up to her and was like all excited to meet her and was like tell me about your life and like all of her little friends were like yeah go off on her barbie tell her how to destroy her that was one thing that they said and this girl like goes off and it's like i'm just the classic fascist and sexist and it's your fault you've ruined women barbie blah blah blah, blah. and i'm like this is just disgusting first of all for 12 year olds for them to like make this the main character be like a 12 year old little girl and to give her like i just am tired of the have you met a 12 year old they're freaking ruthless oh my gosh how is that a problem for you is like the 12 year old wasn't a super nice girl 12 year olds are ruthless and it is with good reason. Let me tell you, your body's changing, your hormones are kicking in, you don't know what's going on, you're having expectations placed on you that you never thought, like, this is, this is the expectation that I want for myself. It's just somebody telling me that this is what I need to do. You are seeing bodies changing, different people having different traits. You are most likely experiencing sexualization that you do not even understand on the slightest level, not to even include what's going on in your family life. Because I guarantee that for a lot of 12-year-olds, there are things going on in their family lives. And so if you compare this girl in the movie to a real life 12 year old yeah maybe maybe that 12 year old is gonna have a sharp tongue why is that the thing that morgan's picking on in this movie i don't understand the like bratty teenage not even teen preteen girl and like she didn't have a rough life growing up it was clear that she had a mother and a father who they barely barely showed the father in the picture granted oh, they no. made her mother who was america ferrara look like total doofus among us I, I literally forgot that there was a father i, I thought they were like making it where <laughs> yeah she was like she like was a, a single mom yes she didn't have a tough life based on like five minutes of background info, so she can't be a little bit ornery. Like, what are you talking about? I'm so confused about what point they're trying to make because they're like, well, she didn't have a tough life, so why was she a brat? Because she's a 12-year-old girl? Like, I, I, I don't know. It, what, what point are you trying to make? Why did that bother you so much? You clearly don't know 12-year-olds who are, again going through lots of changes as 12 year olds.
I mean, uh, really yeah no turns out she's got a dad too and loves yeah, them desperate like, single mom so weird so i just did not like that i didn't like that they like just had this 12 year old be whatever so savage and i didn't like that throughout the whole movie I'm when savage. her and her mom show up into the movie like she is mothering the mom she is mothering america America is not the mom figure. She's like this scaredy cat, lame, weak woman who doesn't know how to daughter how to mother her daughter. Her daughter is telling her to step it up, and like it's just sad to me. And I'm like, but that could be the reality. Of well, the, sometimes I mean, you see that a good amount with bratty daughters and mothers that just take the submissive role. But that just makes me be like. Quit your job, lady, and go learn how to raise your daughter because that is your main job. But no, they trashed motherhood multiple times, and being a mother is very ordinary and not special. Even and though at one point they do, cool they do it. bring it back and say that you can be a mother. Like right, it was in one her very long speech. She quick not Paul being the one to give the benefit of the doubt to people. My goodness, but I did not. Again, I, I didn't get the message that they were trashing motherhood. This is another point where I'm going to say I didn't get that messaging from the movie. Maybe Paul and Morgan saw a completely different movie than I did and they just so happened to have the same actors and actresses within it. I think it's a pretty common experience to go through a phase when you're growing up where you rebel against your parents or your caregivers, your guardians, whatever it may be, to to think like, I don't want anything to do with you. You see me as a little kid. I'm not a little kid. I'm grown up. I can make my own decisions. And maybe that happens at 12. Maybe it happens at 16. Maybe it happens at 18, whatever it may be. But I think it's a pretty common experience to go through to have one relationship with your parent, but then to realize that like those dynamics are changing. And for the parent to just be like, I, I don't want you to grow up. I don't want you to leave. I want you to be my, my baby and, and not necessarily not need me as much anymore or be independent. And, and of course, like they want their kids to grow up and be functional and independent and live on their own and all of that. But it's like just yesterday you were my baby and now and now this is happening. Like now you're you're growing up and I don't like it and it makes me sad. Like I think that's a very normal thing for parents to experience and I don't think that it's a weakness to portray that sense of like man I think I just I miss how things used to be. I don't think that's portraying somebody as being pathetic or a bad mom or somebody who needs to quit their job and figure out how to be a parent. I personally don't think that's fair says if you want to be a mother that's fine or if you don't want to be a mother that's fine too that was her <laughs> phrase <laughs> not good enough for me so all right we walk out of the theater that is fine and i know that morgan has a completely different experience than i do as a wife um and she very much believes that being a mom is integral to who she is and what she wants to do with her life. And she went through infertility and she had a very tough birth with her child. And so like, I don't want to go too hard into this subject, but it's like, it is fine. If, if you want to be a mom, that's great. And if you don't, that's also fine. Personally, I think it's better to think critically about whether or not you want to be a parent before becoming one. Um, and if you decide that that's what you want to do, Great. Amazing. Best of luck. Hope that you love the experience and it is joyful and wonderful for you. But being a parent is not like a part-time gig. It's not something you can try out and then step back from if you decide that it's not for you. Like, I personally think that you should be very sure that you are ready to take that on before going for it and so if somebody says like if you want to be a mom great if you don't want to be a mom great I'm on board I am so on board with that people don't just like have to have kids because it's what's expected by society and I think that a lot of people would be better off if they did not abide by societal expectations and they really took the time to be like is this what I want for me is this what I want for my life and if not what do I want and they had that kind of ability to evaluate what they want out of their own lives. Uh, and not to say that you can't learn a lot from 
your daughters and your children. Like, you totally can. But that was not the case. That was like, no, 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 no. I don't know. There was something wrong about it. I, that was an interesting observation, Morgan, that I would was not planning on bringing up. But, I mean, <sighs> fair. Fair observation. Okay. So we're leaving the theater. And I turn to Morgan. And I say, all right, your official 1 through 10 score. And I'm thinking we're going to drop very similar scores <laughs> at the end of the day. But that was not the case. And Morgan has actually, in the last day, said her score even dropped another point. Yeah. So when we first walked out of the theater, I gave it... We said three, two, one... Four out she of gave ten. a four out of ten. I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. Now it's a three out of ten for me. Wow. The longer I think on it. Hers has dropped... And I will go down to a 7 out of 10. <laughs> I still, like I said, I, I gave you my positives. I thought Ryan Gosling's character, there was enough redeemable stuff. I enjoyed the second half of the film. And ultimately, as hard as it is, I did shelve a lot of the wokeness and just kind of chuckled at it. Mm-hmm. Even though they literally force fed it to you. It was just like really hard for me to ignore it because it was literally every single line basically in that movie. Three out of ten, seven out of ten. There's our official scores. Have you seen Barbie or do you plan to see it? That surprises me. I think in general when I've talked about Paul and Morgan, I have been a lot more critical of Paul typically so to hear him give the Barbie movie a 7.5 and now that he's had more time to reflect a 7 out of 10 and Morgan gives it or she initially gave it a 4. Hmm. That is not what I would have expected out of this. It is, it's almost a little bit more disappointing that Paul gave it like a higher rating than Morgan did. That Morgan was so offended on behalf of men that she would have given it that score. It's a little bit of a bummer. It. I wanted to leave that movie feeling fun and lighthearted. I left annoyed that I spent money on that and wasted two and a half hours of my life. That's fair. I mean, that is fair. <laughs> have you seen it? What score out of 10 would you give it? You guys comment below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed hanging out with us in the live streams. I enjoy doing these live streams and these type of videos with you guys. All right, we love you. We'll be back to chat with those who are live. Have hope. And be free. Yes, if you're in the live chat, we'll be right back. Well, okay. That's what Paul and Morgan had to say about the Barbie movie. I think I disagreed with like 99% of what they were saying and the opinions that they had, but I, I suppose that is to be expected. So not necessarily a surprise there, but I would love to hear your thoughts on Paul and Morgan's video, or if you have seen the Barbie movie, what you thought of it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave it in the comment section down below. Or if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify, you can leave it in the Q&A for this particular episode. And while you are doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel or leaving the podcast a rating and review, that would be amazing. I would be so appreciative of that. And if you have done any of those things already, thank you so much. I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.